For those of you who are taking communicative abilities in English 1, I want to spend a few minutes talking about the assignment that was this, that for those of you who are taking communicative abilities in English 1, I want to spend a few minutes giving you some group feedback regarding the assignment that was completed during module one. The instructions for module one, and as I'm going over the instructions and providing feedback, take a look again at your video. Listen and watch your performance in terms of some of the aspects that I want to bring to your attention in today's video. So here in the instructions we have uh, the task of creating or preparing for first a semi-structured interview which includes creating an interview guide. Now, I do not give you a lot of specific ways of structuring your, your interview guide. It really is open to how you want to prepare for this semi-structured interview. And this is the one thing I wanted us to focus on is this concept of a semi-structured interview as opposed to what's called a structured interview. Structured interview is where you create questions, you prepare questions, and you simply go from one question to the next. So you follow a, a specific order in the way that you present certain questions, and you already know in advance before the interview starts what kind of questions that you're gonna ask. And a, a structured interview is important or necessary when you're interviewing a lot of different people and you want to find out exactly the same kinds of information, a structured interview is very helpful. But for this particular exercise, this assignment, you were asked to interview one person. And the idea was to get as much detail about your topic as possible. And a way to do that is instead of setting up a structured interview, you want to prepare and conduct what's called a semi-structured interview. Now, a semi-structured interview is more conversational. It's more based on what the interlocutor, the person that you're speaking to, the interviewee, what he or she is telling you. The questions that you are going to create in the moment are based on what your partner is telling you in that particular moment. Now you might have one interview that you prepare that is general in nature that relates to the topic overall that you want to to focus on. I provided here a list of different writing and speaking prompts that you could choose from that would be the basis for your interview. So you could have and maybe in some cases here I'm looking yeah, there are some that actually have the question already. So this certainly could be an opening question, an initial question that you start with that's already prepared. But from there, any other additional questions are basically going to emerge from the conversation, from the way that your partner is responding. So in the interview guide, I'm basically looking for any kind of document that has been uploaded to Teams that relates in some way to the topic. Again, it probably is not going to be a list of questions. It could be a list of subtopics. I've seen some interview guides that have a list of subtopics that relate to an overall topic so that in the moment as you're using the guide, this instrument to help you provide a, a good interview, then it basically allows you to make sure that you don't forget any subtopics or key points that you want to get out of the interview. Again, you're not sure how you, the, the uh, interviewee is going to respond. You don't know exactly what he or she, or you shouldn't. You shouldn't know in advance what kind of responses you're, you're going to get. But based on those responses, you come up with follow-up questions. Now, another thing that I would include in your interview guide is certain question words. How, what, why, when, where, how many, with whom, how long. These are question words that in the moment, as you're listening to your partner provide an answer, you're choosing certain key words that are relevant that you just need or want to know more about. So if they're talking about living in a city, that they have a preference for living in a big city, 
You might ask, well, where or what part of a city do you frequent and mention the city that he or she mentioned? If they mention Aguas Calientes, you might say, okay, well, which places do you like to visit or which restaurants do you like to visit? Why do you like living in the northern part of Aguas Calientes, if that was part of the conversation. You're trying to grasp certain keywords that you're listening to, right, that you're getting from the interview, and then follow up with questions. All right, so our task, once we have created our interview guide, then we are to conduct an interview, the interview itself. Now, the interview for the purposes of this assignment with just having two, just you, the interviewer, and your partner, the interviewee, you were asked to have or conduct an interview that lasts between 10 to 12 minutes. All right, so during the interview, go back and watch your, the interview that you conducted. What's more important is what your partner is telling you. There really is not a uh, need or it's not really even important for you to provide an opinion or for you to even provide any ideas unless it's to support what your partner is telling you. Again, this is all about trying to get information. You're collecting data, basically. This is a data collecting technique, right? To get information about what your partner is feeling what your partner has experienced in the past and so you need to follow up with questions and not have so much information that you're sharing but really f turning it around and asking follow-up questions to get more detailed information from your partner now what you can do is what's called setting up a question where you are making a few statements and perhaps you agree or disagree but it's very brief and it's based on something that your partner has told you, and then you lead into a question. You might say something like, okay, I, you mentioned that you enjoy going to different restaurants in Aguas Calientes, and that you like, uh, you like to, uh, you enjoy, let's say, Italian food. I enjoy Italian food too. When or which restaurants do you think are the most Important of the ones that you've gone to, you mentioned that you like to go to Italian restaurants. Which aspects of those Italian restaurants appeal to you the most? Right? So you could set up a question where you have some just regular declarative statements, but again, it's based on what he or she told you. It's not just your uh, opinion, it's not comparing your opinion with your partner's opinion. It's only to set up a question to provide context, maybe to lead the conversation into a specific direction, then followed by a question. But everything that you ask after that first initial question, everything that you ask should come from a statement from your interviewee. So go back and listen to your interview again and see how you've done that, if you've done that. Listen to your interview and see if you are not offering your own opinion, but you're focusing your interview on trying to get as much information from your partner as possible. So the instructions also list here, place, and record, or place the recorded interview into the folder. So make sure, of course, that your interview recording, the video, is in Teams. There have been a few cases where I was not able to access the video. And in those cases, I sent a message to you requesting that you check to, to make sure that I'm able to access that, that video. But these are the main things that I wanted to bring to your attention. Go back, take another look at your uh, interview, and look specifically at these aspects here that I'm sharing with you here today. This was the purpose of doing this interview this semi-structured interview so that you could have practice and in a, have an experience of questioning someone else, trying to get information, but keep it as, conversation, as conversational as possible, trying to offer ways of setting up questions and then asking those follow-up questions to dig deeper and deeper, thinking again of the different question words 
and basically not reading any questions to uh, it during the interview. Okay, one of the things, one of the characteristics of doing a good semi-structured interview is not having to read any questions whatsoever. It's a, it's conversational in that sense, as you're just listening to what your partner's telling you, and then you're coming back with questions and follow-up questions, more specific questions, digging deeper and deeper, getting more detailed information about what he or she is telling you. So I hope this helps. And uh, for those who are interested in uh, your grades, we can talk about it in class. You can come by my office or we can schedule time online to meet and I'll uh, share your grades uh, with you.